So welcome to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over a GCSE Maths topic of Error Intervals. Now before going through some past exam questions I'll talk you through what prior knowledge you need to make this topic more understandable and I'll also include links to lessons that cover each of these topics in greater detail as well as a link to the questions that we go through in this video and all you need to do to access those is just click on the link in the description. Now before we get started working through some past exam questions, let's just have a quick overview over the prior knowledge needed to successfully answer questions related to error intervals. Now the first topic you need to be able to understand is place value. Now this may seem like a topic that you haven't done for ages and might seem beneath you if you're studying GCSE higher, but again it's really important that you do understand and not just know the place value beyond the decimal point but also before the decimal point as well so tenths, thousands, ten thousandths etc. The next topic and again it's a really important one is rounding so you need to be comfortable and confident in rounding numbers to decimal places to significant figures and truncated and if you're struggling with any of those three then I strongly recommend you go back practice these types of rounding and then come back to error intervals. Now the next topic is inequalities. Now error intervals are often written as an inequality so it's really important that you do remember the layout. Now the layout for an error interval is always going to be the lower bound is less or equal to and then x whatever the letter is and then the upper bound always has a less than symbol. There's no line after the x for the upper bound so it's always written the error bound is always written like this and sometimes when it comes to multiple choice questions they're the easy ones to spot because you are never going to get something that looks like this or that looks like this so they're definitely not going to be an error interval the next one is integers so understand what an integer is know when to use integers and when to use decimal numbers so for example depending on the relation of the question and what it, the actual context is so for example you can't have 0.9 of a person so you'll need to round up to the nearest person however when it comes to length you can have a degree of accuracy with there so it could go up right to the upper limit which rounded could give you that upper bound so again just know when to use that next one is uh, area perimeter and volume now these usually are the the latter parts of a question and sometimes the more problem solving questions where you'll either need to use the upper or lower bound depending on the context of where they want the maximum or the minimum area perimeter or volume to then work it out and the last one is fractions so again knowing how to get the smallest fraction how to get the biggest fraction so know that if you want the smallest fraction you want the smallest numerator and the biggest denominator and if you want the biggest fraction you want the biggest numerator and the smallest denominator so now let's get straight into some past exam questions now again just a little reminder if you want access to these questions all you need to do is just simply click on the link in the description and also if there's any aspects of what we go through in these questions i'll also include links to lessons which go through error intervals in more detail but also the prior sort of topics that you need to know to be able to comfortable with answering these questions so looking at question one it says to the nearest thousand there are twelve thousand people in the concert write down the minimum possible number of people at the festival now the error interval for this is going to be well if i look at the rounding i divide that by two and i get 500. so that means that the error interval is going to be 12,000 plus or minus 500 which gives me an answer of 11500 and 12,500. Now looking at this the minimum possible number well the smallest number that can be that x can be within this interval is going to be 11500 then says what's the maximum number of people at the festival now x has got to be smaller than 12,500 but it's got to be an integer because we're dealing with people so the smallest the largest integer x could be or the the nearest number the whole number to 12,500 is going to be one two four nine nine then moving on to question two, it says the cost of some food shopping is £43 when rounded to the nearest pound. Write down the minimum possible value of the shopping. So again, to the nearest pound, if I divide that by two, I get 50 pence. So it's going to be £43 plus or minus 50 pence. 
So then the smallest value, so again, just writing that out as an error interval. Again, doesn't matter about the letter. So the smallest amount is going to be £42.50. And the maximum amount, well, the nearest pence you can have that's less than £43.50 is going to be £43.49. Now moving on to question three, it says an integer x is truncated to the nearest 100. The result is 8,300. Write down the minimum possible value of x. Well, the minimum possible value is going to be 8,300. Now again, looking at truncation, the range for it to be rounded to the nearest 100 is going to be 8,300 to 8,399. And there are 100 numbers between those two. Then it says write down the maximum, which I've just done, which was 8399. Moving on to question four, it says the height of a building is 116 meters, correct to the nearest meter. Circle the error interval. So for this one, we need to circle this one here. Now moving on to question five, it says the number x when rounded to two sig fig is 250. The same number x when rounded to one sig fig is 300. Circle the error interval of x. So looking at this first statement, let's first of all write down the error interval for this particular statement. So to two sig fig, well the second sig fig in 250 is t uh, represents a 10. So rounding this number up to nearest 10 is going to be have an error interval of 245 and 255. Then if we round the number up to one sig fig, and the first significant figure represents hundreds, so that's going to be 250 to 350. Now for this I'm looking for what is the smallest value that fulfills both the two categories. Well that's going to be 250 and what's the biggest number that x could be to fulfill both inequalities? Well that's going to be 255. So what I'm looking for is 250 and 255 which is our last option there. Then moving on to question six, it says Peter finished a puzzle at a time of 87.6 seconds. The time t is to the nearest tenth of a second. So again, half of a tenth is 0.05. So then I need to add 0.05 plus and minus to 87.6, in which I get an error interval of 87.55 to 87.6. 0.65. Moving on to question seven, it says that a number n when truncated to one decimal place is 46.2. Complete the error interval for the value of n. So for this, it's going to be 46.2 to 46.3. Then for question eight, it says a number n when rounded to the nearest five is 85. Complete the error interval for the value of n. What's the nearest 5? That means with 85, I'm going to plus or minus half of 5, which is 2.5, giving me a lower bound of 82.5 and an upper bound of 87.5. It then says John is drawing a rhombus. The length of each side is 3.5 to 1 decimal place. Complete the error interval for the length of one side. Well, one decimal place is a tenth, so half a tenth is 0.05. So it's going to be 3.5 plus or minus 0 0.05. And that will give me 3.45 and 3.55. Then says complete the error interval for the perimeter. Well, if it's a rhombus, it's got four sides. So the smallest perimeter is going to be using four of the smaller lengths. So that's going to be four times 3.45, which gives me an answer of 13.8 and then the largest perimeter is going to be four times the longest length it could be which is 3.55 and that gives me an answer of 14.2 and there we go for that one then moving on to question 10 it says the length of a square when truncated to two decimal places is 574. Complete the error interval for the length of one side. Well, this is going to be 5.74 to 5.75. It then says complete the error interval for the area. Well, the smallest area 
is going to be the smallest length, which is 5.74 squared, which gives me an answer of 32.9476. So 32.9476. Don't forget the decimal place. And then the biggest area is going to be 5.75 squared, which is 33.0625. So 33. 0.0625. Then moving on to our last question, it says the length of a piece of wood is nine meters to the nearest meter, complete the error interval for the length of a piece of wood. So for this to the nearest meter is going to be half of that is 0 0.5, so it's going to be 8.5 to 9.5. It then says the length of a different piece of wood is five meters to the nearest meter. Erin says that the total length of two pieces of wood is 15 meters to the nearest meter. Give an example to show that it could be correct. So again, so we're given an example where it could be correct. So where a number when added to is going to add up to or rounded up can uh, be 15. So looking at this, the error interval is going to be 4.5 to 5.5. So what I need to do is I need to pick a number within the range of 8.5 to 9.5, but it can't be 9.5, and a number that's between 4.5 and 5.5, but it can't be 5.5, that when added together is rounded to give me 15. So again, you could pick any two numbers within that category. So if I go for 9.4, because 9.4 is within 8.5 and 9.5, and add that to, let's go for 5.4, and that gives me an answer of 14.8, which rounded to the nearest integer equals 15. So again, an example of that would be absolutely fine. There's loads of different other numbers you could use, but as long as this number is using this, in between this error interval and this number here is between this error interval you should be absolutely fine. But again, don't forget to make sure that you write that you add the two numbers together and then show that as when it's rounded, it does equal 15.